Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Derek Elliott from Derek.com and this is the shoe tutorial. Have you ever seen some sweet kicks on the gram and thought to yourself, wow, I'd really like to make some 3D models of shoes but had no idea where to start? I found myself in this exact position only a few months ago. Unfortunately, until now, there really aren't a lot of great shoe modeling tutorials on YouTube, so I figured it out myself, backed by a measly 13 years of experience using Blender. But it turns out I wasn't the only one who wanted to make cool 3D models of shoes. Shoes. and many other people just like you were curious how to do this that weren't backed by 13 years of experience. It became my duty to break down my process and put together the dopest shoe modeling tutorial on YouTube. One that would provide you with all the tools you need to become an absolute beast at modeling complex organic shapes using simple tools and a crap ton of modifiers in Blender. In order to better understand the hypest of hype beast shoe design, I sought to acquire an insanely expensive pair of shoes, only to be totally scam and lose $500, which made my wife very upset. For legal reasons, I will tell you this is not a beginner tutorial. But in all honesty, if you've got a Google search subscription and a little hair left to lose, I'm sure you can follow along at any skill level. Please sit back and enjoy the process as you and I together bring to life the dopest 3D shoe model you have ever created. Derek, are you serious? $500? Which brings us to today's sponsor of the video, Milanote. So Milanote reached out to me as fans of the channel and asked if I was interested in trying out their organization tool for creatives. And I said, sure. I've never done a sponsored video like this because a lot of times the folks reaching out just don't seem to understand the kind of work that you and I do, but Milanote really does seem to get it. And after they reached out to me, I had been playing with it for a while and ended up finding out that one of my freelance clients was actually already using it, which further confirmed that it was indeed a legit thing. So. Um, yeah, Milanote is a tool to keep your creative projects on track, especially in the early stages when you're sort of collecting ideas, inspiration, planning things out and sort of laying down the kind of the essential groundwork that's part of really any creative project. If you're anything like me, you might typically have your sketches and inspiration spread all over the place, different places, different programs. I'm really looking forward to integrating Milanote into more of my projects, hopefully get closer to my New Year's resolution from probably five or 10 years ago to become more organized. Yeah, that hasn't happened yet, but maybe it will with Milanote. Uh, but as far as how it works, there's sort of this flexible drag and drop interface that lets you just move, scale things as you please, organizing as you go. There's also this cool little little web clipper extension that'll allow you to save images, videos, whatever else you want straight from any website without having to download things, re-upload them anywhere. Uh, it's particularly awesome for mood boarding, which is kind of how I use it here. But I also have a second board where I kind of mapped out this tutorial itself, utilizing some more of their checklists and notes just to kind of get a little bit of a sense of structure for what we're doing here. As your board grows, you basically just have an infinite freeform canvas to keep things organized and maintain a bird's eye view of everything in your brain all in one place rather than spread out everywhere. Besides using it just for yourself, Milanote does have a pretty sweet set of collaboration tools that allow you to add people, make comments, things of that nature. I can see this coming in handy for client work, especially in the early phases when there's a lot of loose concept generation and I'm not quite to the point yet where my eyes are just strained looking at the graph editor for hours on end late into the evening. But yeah, the fun part of the project. Um, but if you, dear viewer, want to check out Milanote, there is a link in the description description where you can sign up. It's totally free. There's no time limit even on the free plan. So um, you're not going to like run out in 30 days or anything. Definitely check it out. Appreciate them being the sponsor of the video. Show them some love in the comments. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. All right, all right, all right. Let's start modeling that shoe that you've all been waiting so long to start modeling. Uh, so what I have here is a pretty much default Blender 2.92 scene. Uh, some things you'll notice that are different are that I have screencast keys turned on down here so you can see what buttons I'm pressing. And then I have also increased the size of my interface just a little bit for you folks in the back. Thank you to whichever commenter recommended I do did that in a, a past video. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. We are actually going to use our default cube here because we love it so much. Um, but what I don't need is the camera or the lamp. So shift click to select both those X and press X to delete them. Um, so what I have now here is just the cube. And like I said, I'm going to use it. So 
Uh, let me, because I've been spinning around my viewport so much, let me make sure. So I want to press one. Okay, so that's my front view. So I want this to be the side I'm working on. So I'm gonna press tab to go into edit view, edit mode, I'm sorry. And I wanna essentially delete one side of the cube. So I'm gonna click, 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 and I'm holding shift to select multiple things and press X to delete those vertices. Uh, similarly, you could have um, pressed three to go into your face select mode and then just deleted the whole thing that way. Um, now we're going to be doing a lot of that switching between vertex, edge, and face select mode. And the way you can do that is by pressing one, two, and three along the top of your keyboard. Those commands are also up here. Again, we'll be doing that quite a bit. Worth getting the hang of. I have been using Blender like 13 years and I didn't even start using those hotkeys until like three years ago. And they're a life changer. Don't make the same mistake I did. Learn one, two, three. Okay, enough about that. Let's go ahead and jump into adding our first modifier. We're going to do a ton with modifiers. Um, so over here in this little wrench tab, I'm going to add a mirror modifier. And the reason I used my default cube and didn't move it is because now my origin for this object is right here in the center, which is just about right where I want it. So now if I go into edit mode and make changes on one side, it's going to happen on the other side. Um, now I'm not going to want my mesh going through itself. So one thing I will go ahead and do is turn on this clipping option, which you'll see now will make them not um, go through each other. And now once they do connect, you won't be able to pull them apart though. So sometimes you need to turn off clipping if you need to pull something back apart. Uh, but that's enough about that. I got my mirror modifier set up. And by the way, I'm fully aware shoes are not perfectly symmetrical, but it's going to be a heck of a lot easier to model everything pretty much symmetrically and then make those asymmetrical changes after the fact. Um, so what I have here is my plane nicely in place. And the first thing I want to do is kind of model, I've probably said first thing I want to do many times. These are all the first things. We'll get to the second thing in an hour. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but what I'm creating here is essentially a sock shape that my foot can go in or somebody, some person in the 3D metaverse sock foot can go in. Um, and with that shape, I'm going to be sort of building off of it all the other shapes. So this is kind of our, our underlay almost. So what I want to do is tab into edit mode and then press three to go into my side view. Um, or you could press uh, these buttons up here if you don't have a number pad, and that's three on the number pad, by the way. Um, so yeah, you can use these to go into your different orthographic views, which is kind of convenient. And now you'll want to start making your shoe, which is what we've been doing all along. Um, so go ahead and start. That's right. You don't know what the heck a shoe looks like. I don't know either. So that's why I have some reference images. Press tab to go back out of edit mode and then press shift A and add an image and I'll add a reference image. Now you might have a sketch or something or in my case, I actually downloaded some images from the popular shoe brand Adidas or Adidas. I don't care how you say it. That's I'm, I'm gonna say it the way I wanna say it. I got a couple friends that work there. Shout out Ryder and uh, and Alex for being Adidas folks. Don't think they designed this shoe, but hey, we're here for them. So double click on the image. Again, you can use a sketch, whatever you want. Um, but one thing that's convenient about these particular images is that some poor graphic designer, maybe it was one of my friends, um, made these all perfectly centered, which is quite convenient. Um, so yeah, this is just a, this is gonna help me make sure that my shoe is sort of realistic proportions. Again, we're gonna stray pretty far from this design, but it's really helpful um, just to make sure things are right. Now this is super wonky, came in at a very odd angle, and that's because that's the angle we were looking at. Um, so the fastest way to get that into a more proper orientation is going to be select it and then press Alt R which will reset the rotation. And now what I want to do is sort of spin it into place. So I can press R and X and then holding control and looking in the top left, I can see that that is at 90 degrees and that's great. And then you can press RZ or there's also ways you can do this over here if you'd prefer to adjust it that way. Uh, if you don't have this bar, you can press N to bring it up. That's called the N bar. At least that's what I'll call it because you press N to bring it up. Now, one little bit of housekeeping, this shoe is absolutely dominating my viewport. I want it to be not quite so visible, so I'll check this little opacity box here. Turn that down 
till it's something like that. A little more like a reference image. So now what I'll do is go back into my side view here. And then now I can move this up a little bit. I'll put this, you know, sort of on that green line here. That's my y-axis. That'll kind of be my, my floor, if you will. And now with my previously was cube selected, I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode. Back in my side view here. And then just kind of scale this down. Again, changes are happening on both sides here. And then I'm just going to move this into place probably right around there. Now follow along as closely as you like here. Again, we're going into edge select by pressing 2 here. I'm press E and then R to rotate this. 1 to grab my vertex select. And I'm going to model sort of this cuff. This was kind of the most difficult thing when I was working on this tutorial to figure out is what is a good edge flow for a shoe. And that's something you have to consider a lot is um, kind of what your what your underlying geometry is. So again, you don't have to follow this exactly, but I found that this method or this kind of edge flow seemed to work the best for me. Of course, you are welcome to try something else, but this works pretty good. Now I'm just kind of moving these things around. I want my, in, in pretty much in all cases when you're modeling, it's good to have your geometry be as square as possible. You don't want anything too stretched. You know, this is getting a little stretched over here. Maybe we could just pull that over a tad. Um, but that just helps to make sure that when you're using like a subdivision surface modifier, that um, things behave predictably, basically. So what I'm going to do now is take this entire edge, and I'm not sure if I mentioned it. You press E to extrude. If you didn't catch that, I'm probably a little late on that one, but um, it's always it's always a, a toss up between catering to the true beginners and catering to the pros. Um, so I try to land somewhere in the middle, explaining my hotkeys as much as I can. But I do realize that it's been a uh, it's, it's slow for people who know what they're doing. Now, just to slow things down even more, because we're going to be do, doing so much selecting in this, I want to show you a couple tricks for um, selecting this bottom edge here. So what I said I want to do is extrude this whole thing down. Um, so instead of you know doing them like one by one, and then like, yeah, you don't want to do that. <laughs> um, you can shift click multiple things, obviously, and select them all that way. Um, or you can select an edge loop. I can press Alt-A to deselect. And then Alt and left click will select that whole edge loop, which usually works pretty well. You could also select on one side and then hold Control, and that will go along the shortest path to the other side. Or you could do like a you know circle select. I'm a big fan of the circle select. Um, that's C to bring that up. And then scroll in and out. Hopefully you have a mouse wheel to control the size of that. Um, so enough about ways to select that edge. Let's press E and then bring that whole bad boy down. And then now I'm just going to do a little bit more shaping. Now again, this is sort of just the sock shape of our shoe. So not going to worry about the sole, just going to kind of get what I believe to be that inner area where your digital foot goes. Um, so something like that I think is just fine. Now don't put yourself in under too much pressure to get this exactly right. Uh, of course we can make changes after the fact, but good start off in a good place. And I think that's a good place other than the fact that our shoe is really freaking wide. Too wide. You could bring it in look a little bit that way or whatever you want to. Yeah, something, something like that is fine. Um, let's go ahead and connect this side to that side. And the way I'm going to do that, with some of my same selection techniques, I can use my Alt and left click to select the edge ring, or, okay, 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 we're going to do one more. Select A, press A to select everything, and then there's a cool little command, uh, which isn't hugely relevant since there's just not a lot to select here, but uh, you can press F3 to bring up your search menu, and you can see I've already searched for it. Select boundary loop. F3 is to bring up this window, and that will select the outer boundary loop. Now we can press E and X to bring that over and that should run right into each other. So now if it didn't, remember we have this clipping option which will prevent vertices from going through the mirror during transform. So that's all fine and dandy. Now you might want to move this in a little bit more so you could press tab to go into edit mode and then see the circle select and move that over. 
oops, no good. So what I like to do when I want to make sure I'm selecting all of something is go into my x-ray view. So you can see I was kind of looking at a little bit of an off angle, so it didn't get what wasn't in view. Um, but what I can do is press Alt Z to go into my x-ray view and then circle select with C, bang, got all of them. If you don't want to learn the hotkey Alt Z, which you'll learn it eventually, I tell you, um, you can use this little button up here next to your other viewport options to uh, to go into x-ray view. But Alt Z is the handy little hotkey there. Um, so just bring this over and then now what the heck does the shoe look like from the top? Let's add another reference image. Shift A, image, reference. Bam, 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 top, bam. Oops, wanted to do something else. Okay, press 7 to go on top view, add image, reference, top. Now it will come in at the view we were looking, so we don't have to do that weird rotation thing again. But of course, it is freaking the wrong way. Rotate that around 180 degrees. Select it. Turn up the down the opacity. And wham, bam, thank you, shoe. Let's now start. Let's go into our top view and just make a couple quick little adjustments here. Circle select, bam, bam, bam. Move things over. Just starting to kind of get the shape. Okay, these come back. Oh, yeah. So go ahead and print that out and show it to your mom and we're done just kidding you're probably thinking if especially if you're not very familiar with modeling that this is like so far like what do we have to do now we have to add all the little for for to see faces by hand no we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier add modifier subdivision surface which will smooth the mesh uh, I, was, I was curious if there's a a, a, temp, a tool tip here Split the faces into smaller parts, giving it a smoother appearance. Wow, I don't think I've ever actually read that. But yeah, the subdivision surface modifier essentially takes our cage, which is sort of this mesh we created, and that's why we want it to be so low poly, is so we don't have too much stuff we have to move around. But we get this nice detailed mesh, and it's still not that detailed, so we could turn up our viewport levels maybe all the way to three and we can right click to shape smooth. Now the viewport and the render levels is something to know just a little bit about. Viewport levels is what appears in your viewport and render is what how many levels will be rendered when you render. So uh, sometimes you wanna leave the viewport levels a little bit lower, just you know depending on the specifications of your computer. Sometimes if you're working on really dense meshes, you want this levels in the viewport to be a little smaller just so that your viewport is nice and snappy. Um, but for me, this isn't going to be too crazy detailed, so uh, at least for now, I'll leave it at three. Um, I do like them to match if possible, just so I can know that I'm going to, what I see is what I'm going to get. WYSIWYG is the uh, term, I believe, for that. Um, so yeah, let's move this into shoe shape some more. Um, I'll teach you a couple more little tools. Um, of course, we already know G and X, but there's this other cool thing called edge sliding. So if I press G twice, then I can slide along adjacent edges, which is really handy for things like this. You could even do that with like two edges selected. GG. GG, bro. Good game. G, X, uh, there's also the gizmo up here. The move gizmo is quite convenient for moving things, yeah. Um, so yeah, just kinda, this is where the tutorial's gonna get kinda slow, <laughs> but for real. Um, you can pause the video if you want and start shaping your shoe out, but of course, feel free. I know you ASMR folks aren't going anywhere. Um, feel free to listen to me and Watch me do what I'm doing. This is just kind of a slow therapeutic process, creating your shoe shape. Um, now our digital person has nowhere to put their foot, so um, we're gonna press three again to go one, two, three, face select. Select those faces, oh, those faces, X faces. And now we have a nice big huge hole to put a big huge foot, um, which now I'm realizing is way too big. So let's, uh, Let's move this over. I really do like the, uh, I know they, they preach the hotkeys in Blender, but boy do I love this little, little move gizmo. Um, so we don't wanna 
slice our foot open with this super razor thin thing. So let's make it thicker. Let's give it some solidity. What would we do? We would add a solidify modifier. Now, if we bring this up, you can see it gets thicker. The shading is a little weird. Um, if we were to switch back into flat shading, right click shade flat, um, you'll see that this is what the solidify modifier is doing. It's basically, uh, so the modifiers work in order. So we've got the mirror happening first, and then it's being subdivided, and then it's being solidified, which is why we have just still kind of a sharp edge here. It's solid now, but it's sharp. So what I want to do is actually, there's a number of ways, like anything in Blender, you could do it so many different ways. Sorry, my, my dog came in here, wanted to see how awesome the shoe was looking. She said it's not looking very good. That edge is way too sharp. So where was I? I think what we were talking about is how the mirror modifier, the, the modifiers work in order. So it's being mirrored then it's being subdivided, then it's being solidified. So to round this over, you know, we could do a bevel or something like that, or a faster way to do that might be to just drag this solidify above the subdivision. So what we have now happening is, of course, if we were to hide the subdivision, um, so we have, of course, the mirror happening, and then it's being solidified, and then it's being subdivided. So now not only is the outside getting rounded over, but this newly created solid if I geometry is also smooth there. So turn that on and boom, we've got a nice solidified rounded over sock shape, which we can again, right click and shade smooth. Um, so now we will just continue. I don't know how that got all the way over there. Oops, let's get that guy too. But yeah, um, you know, maybe you designed your own shoe. Maybe you got a, a cool, cool one in the works. Maybe you're just doing what I'm doing with some reference images. Yeah, just kind of kind of shape this out. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, we can go back and change things as we go, but just get it pretty close. You know, you might be thinking that's way too big. Maybe this needs to come over too. Maybe a check your top view again. Things like that, you know. Just and again, we got our asymmetrical shoe. Don't hate me. I know it's asymmetrical. Or, yeah. The underlying shoe is asymmetrical. My shoe is going to be extremely symmetrical. Um, sometimes if you were, which these do line up, so I don't know why I keep going back and forth on it, but um, if your images aren't perfectly centered, your reference images, you may have to kind of like sort of move them a little bit to make sure that they're aligned. Um, but anyways, I think this is really coming together pretty good. Um, I'm going to wrap this up here shortly, I believe. The next thing we're going to do is um, move on to creating a sole. And don't don't be afraid to add, you know, you can even start adding some details in at this point. Like, you know, maybe you want a little bit of a tongue there. And then, yeah, kind of move this down. And another command I'm doing a lot is Alt-A to deselect everything. That's just kind of the fastest way to make sure that um, as you enter a new selection, you're only selecting what you meant to select. Um, maybe this comes up just a tad, something like that. Again, this is sort of going to be the inner part of our shoe. Um, so it doesn't need to be all the way down to the bottom. I'm like just undoing and redoing changes here. Uh, <laughs> I think, um, I think we're in pretty good shape right now. I'm going to continue messing it with continue messing with it for three to six more hours. No, but for real, uh, take all the time you need. Get this looking right. Get it right. Get it tight. Um, yeah, I think that's gonna do it for me for now. I'll just keep making changes, and you'll start to consider skipping ahead. Feel free to. But yeah, pause the video, work on yours, get it how you like. I think that's how I like. And um, so what I'll do now is shift control S to save my object. I'm going to save this as sock 2 because don't like sock 1. So I re-recorded this part since, you know, it is the, uh, it's the it's the basis of it all. I didn't want it to be an ugly sock shape. Um, so yeah, we got that all set up. 
and yeah, save your file, and I'll see you in the next part where we are going to keep adjusting our mesh. No, I'm just kidding. We're gonna work on the um, we're gonna work on the sole of the shoe. So I'll see you there. Thanks for being here. Like and subscribe. Click all the links in the description and stuff, and uh, leave lots of friendly comments. Share this video with your friends and family. Um, show your dog, see what they think about it. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's looking pretty good. Thanks for being here. And we're back in the same file we were just in. Maybe you went somewhere, maybe you didn't. Maybe you threw your shoes on and went for a walk. I encourage you to get up and step away from your computer as much as possible. It's a healthy thing to do. Um, but regardless, whatever you did, whatever you didn't, we are back here in our sock file, and we are going to create a soul. And if you've seen any of my videos before, you know that I like to steal geometry from one object and use it to create another. So we're going to do exactly that. What I'm going to do is press tab to go into edit mode here. And then in my face select, I'm just going to select everywhere where I want the salt to be. And we could use our little control click option to, um, to skip from one side to the other. Again, I'm highly emphasizing all the different selection techniques here. So with that selected, I'm going to press Shift D, and then right click to uh, finish out that command, and then P and separate by selection. Now what this will do is create a new um, object that is yeah now separate from this object, which is not a horrible idea at this point to start naming your objects. So up here in our sort of feature tree, our collections area, we can uh, name this one, double clicking it to name it sock. And then this object, you can do the same thing, double click it, or you can press F2 in the viewport to rename it um, soul or whatever the heck you want to name it. Uh, these two empties are our reference images, which I'll leave on for now, but I'll show you how to get rid of those in a second. Uh, but very quickly, you could uncheck these eyes if you just want to hide them. Um, or you could delete them. Maybe you just never want to hear from them again. Maybe you want to just freestyle your shoe. Anyways, we got the... We got the sole shape here. Uh, I need it to be thicker, or I want it to be thicker. So you can turn up the thickness, which is going to go the wrong direction. So you could set a negative value, or you can change this offset to be positive, which it's it's like it's a little redundant that they have that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to think about it. I love the solidify modifier, but this can be kind of a, it can be kind of a wonky thing. Um, but anyways, we've got that. So now I want to flatten out this bottom. So we'll tab to go into edit mode. And oh my god, where is it? We can't select it. It's because it's happening procedurally with the solidify modifier. We can't, we don't have access to this. We only have access to this base piece here. You know, that works fine for up here and whatnot, but we want that bottom geometry. So what we need to do is apply the solidify modifier. Um, so new in Blender 2.92, um, you can like, like the modifiers become outlined when you select them. It used to be that whenever you were just hovered over a modifier, you could press control A and apply it. Um, but now you have to have it, you have to have it selected. Um, you can also use this little drop down here to apply a modifier. So if we apply that, uh, some weird things are going to happen. And that's because remember, we've talked about before how modifiers are applied in order. So if you apply them out of order, you're going to get results that are not the same as when you saw them all stacked up before you applied them. Um, so what basically happened is when we solidified this, it created all these interior faces, which is now giving us this really weird shading. So we could press X to delete them and then just move this whole thing back over. That's one way to do it. Um, and then another way, and again, I just want to be able to show you multiple ways to do things here because there are so many ways to do things in Blender. And one way might apply for you a little bit better. Um, but speaking of applying, you could just apply them in order. So control A to apply, control A to apply. Now we don't have that problem. And what I can do is essentially just delete these vertices on that side and then add back in my mirror modifier. So two ways to do that. Um, I feel like I most often find myself applying anytime I have a mirrored modifier and then something like that's going to happen. I'll usually apply the mirror modifier and then just read delete and then apply it again after the fact. So that's the way I like to do it, but do it however you want. But now you can see in edit mode here, we have access to all these bottom um, parts. So if I press three to go into my side view, I want to flatten out this bottom. And the way I can quickly do that is by just selecting all those along the bottom and then S Z 
and then you can just move it in and hold control until you see in the top left that it, we are at zero, or you can just press SZ and then type zero. And now it is scaled down to zero, which essentially will just bring them all to the same plane. So you can see that they're all flat now. So that's all fine and dandy, but it's a little bit blobby. It's a little bit wonky. And again, creative freedom is all yours. Do what you want. You can have that be as blobby as you want, but I want that bottom edge to be a little bit sharper. Now, typically when you're working with a subdivision workflow, if you want to sharpen an edge, you basically need to create more geometry for that subdivision to work with sort of, I mean, these are essentially like control points. You know, if you're familiar with like T splines or something, it works very similar. Rhino, oh God, that was horrible memories from college, but I, I know a lot of people use Rhino. I think that's what uh, T splines is in. But anyways, we're going to, um, you can press Control R and bring that down, and that's going to create an edge loop, which again is the way you would traditionally make an edge sharp with a subdivision workflow. But I'm not going to do that because we are going to be shaping this out a lot. And if you like, for example, accidentally selected, now there's just, there's just more stuff to select now and it just becomes a little bit of a hassle. So I'm going to X and delete the edge loop that I just added. And I want to do this a little bit more procedurally with a bevel modifier. So for the purposes of showing you this, I'm going to just hide this subdivision modifier for now and shade this flat. Um, so now what I'll do is add in a bevel modifier. So if you've never used the bevel modifier before, you are in for a treat. It's my favorite modifier. Um, it basically will, um, you know, in this case, with just one segment, it's kind of chamfering that edge, uh, but you can turn this up and it will bevel more. Now you'll see that it's not getting these edges and that's because there is a limit method on. So this is actually also new in Blender 2.92. From what I've seen is that a limit method of angle is automatically applied, which is, that is the most common limit method that you would want to use where Blender basically can help detect like where, um, where the bevel should be applied. So angles only that are greater than 30 are going to get that. So if we turn that down, you can see it's going to get more. And if we turn it up, it's going to get less until we're at 90 and at which point it's only really going to get the 90 degree angles. So, um, so that's just a little tidbit about the bevel modifier, but the way I want to actually control this is with a, and just once again, remember I added the edge loop to create that ring around the bottom, but now a bevel modifier is essentially doing that. So if we turn back on our subdivision, you'll see, um, that it's not working because remember it's got a limit method on and now after it's been subdivided there are no angles that are anywhere near 30 degrees so it's not beveling anything um, so again thinking that modifiers go in order we want this bevel to be above the subdivision so now those rings are being created and essentially working the same way as when we added in the edge loop from before um, so instead of using an angle limit method i really just want this bevel along the bottom here and it's going to be difficult to just do that with the limit method of angle alone. So I'll use a weight, which allows you to define areas where the bevel will be by assigning them a weight. And you'll see that nothing is happening now because no edges have bevel weights set on them. So we need to do that manually. And the way we do that is just to select the edges we want beveled, which for me is going to be all of those ones. And then we can, in our N menu again, pressing N to bring up the trusty N menu, uh, you can see we have the edge data. Now there's a vert vertices data too for bevel, um, but we're just gonna be beveling edges. So we'll turn this all the way up to one. So now it will get the maximum effect, 100% of the bevel amount that we've defined here. Now, if this was at, I have to set it to a nice even number because I'm about to have to do math. Uh, if that bevel was set to 0.2, and the bevel weight was set to 0.5, 50%, then it's gonna get a 0.1 bevel. I rarely use uh, anything less than one. Usually, if I'm working with the weight method, I want, um, I, just, I just want it on, essentially, I want on or off. Um, so I've got that all the way up to one, and now I can just define exactly what I want that bevel to be. So make that pretty small, again, up to your preference here. Uh, if you want it really sharp, you could turn up a couple more segments, which is essentially gonna add more edge loops. Um, but you can see again why we did this. So now instead of having to select multiple things, we still just have our regular 
kind of one vertex to select cage mode. So I know I explained a lot there, but it is important that you kind of understand what we're doing and how these things work together. Um, but let's get our bevel to something we like about like that. I might drop that back down to one and then just make this pretty small. Just we've got kind of a nice sharp edge there on the bottom. And now I can do the fun part, which is to start shaping this out similarly to the way we did on the top part. So don't be afraid to rotate things, move them around a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat, obviously. And now this is the sole shape. So we will just kind of move things around here. My dog is licking my leg. Probably going to have to tend to her in a moment. Um, and we're just, yeah, we're going to just kind of suck this up to this sock shape. Suck it up to the sock shape here. Um, this is way too big. You can sometimes a uh, edge slide works a little funny when you're selecting a ton of stuff. Um, but it looks like it worked pretty well there. Um, okay, so this is starting to look pretty good. Um, you know, just shape it how you like it. Don't forget that um, you know you got these ones in here too. Maybe this comes down a little bit. Something like that. You know, obviously inside the shoe you're not going to see too much, but you know, move things around into a into a logical place. We are once again at the part where I'm going to just kind of be doing things here, and you're going to be listening or not. Feel free to pause again. Uh, let's maybe move this out. Make it. Extra, extra stability, bonus stability for this shoe. You aren't falling down wearing a Dirk shoe. Safety first here at the, uh, oh gosh, Dirk shoe design business. Which you can do like cool stuff too. You, you can do that. Doesn't have to be flat. Um, but I like it flat because I'm going to end up adding some more details to this. Spoiler alert. And uh, I just kind of, I kind of already know what I want. I've made like hundreds of shoes, which is why people are so anxious for me to get this tutorial out. It's because I just keep making shoes and like, hey, look at this shoe, look at this shoe. And they're like, Derek, just freaking show us the shoe tutorial. Um, so we finally have, yes. Okay, so that's a nice looking shape there. Um, don't worry too much about this seam. We're going to be adding some details. And in the case of a real shoe, um, you would see some of these edge details. And part of the reason that's there is to hide um, some inconsistencies with the which with the edge there, um, but yeah. So just similar to the sock shape, just sort of get this about how you like it. It's not going to be impossible to uh, make changes after the fact, but yeah, we'll just get it to about what we like. What about do we like? You know, I really I don't know what I want. I just don't know. Something like that I think is looking pretty good. Um, you know, you can make this extra, extra fat, something like that. You could, you know, give your shoe like a huge, oh, oh, he thick, he thick now. Okay. We're not, I don't know exactly what my YouTube audience analytics are, but I don't think it's mostly five-year-olds. So we'll leave that at that. I think we're going to call that the soul. Work with yours as much as you like. Give it plenty of soul. This soul has soul. Anyways, yeah, I think this is looking good. I'm going to press Control, Shift Control S, I think, to make sure save as. Don't want to save over my previous file. Um, we'll name this soul. I am going to name it soul one. I actually am going to save over because similarly to the first time I did the sock, I didn't like the first time I did the soul. Um, okay. So this is all good. You know, feel free to edit your your sock shape a little bit more if you so desire. Okay, Control S, save. Good to go. Next thing we're gonna do is add some details, either to the sole or the top. I'm not sure where I'll go with it next. But thanks for being here. Like, subscribe, click all the links in the description, and uh, yeah, hope you're having fun. Don't be afraid to pause the video. Spend some more time working on this. Also, pause the video and stand up, go take a walk, put some shoes on, get some inspiration, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next part. Welcome to my first ever walk vlog. Doing it mainly to show that I am actually walking between these sections, and my dog really needed a walk. Going uphill, a little winded, so the other reason would be 
that I need to exercise more. And you should as well. Also just want to show you some of the cool houses around my neighborhood. Since the landlord's kicking us out, gotta find a new one. I want to remember all the cool stuff. These hills are intense. That's what happens when you don't like and subscribe. Hope you guys are enjoying the video. I always tell my dog that that's what she'll turn into if she barks too much. I don't know if she believes me. Here's another very different, but pretty cool one. Check out that window on the top. You see how that Y shape is kind of offset? Can't decide if I love it or hate it. Leave a comment. Finally a nice day here in Austin. Like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you got out and walked during this tutorial. Bonus points to you. Good for your health. You should walk often or run, you know. It's not like I'm a workout expert by any means, but uh, yeah, I like walking. The dog likes walking. Walk. Coming up on a few houses here that I, every time I look at them, they look like, like 3D houses I would make. This one especially, I think would make a good 3D modeling tutorial. Sorry, whoever lives there, your house is doomed to be modeled by thousands of blender amateurs. What do you guys think? Should I make a, should I make a tutorial on modeling that house? Back at my uh, house now. Let's go ahead and keep recording the tutorial. Nah, I'm just kidding. That wasn't my house. This is my house. There's my live stream corner. Prettiest corner in the house. How'd we do, Lyndon? We did it. You gonna let Daddy record his tutorial now? The people need part three. What are we gonna do in part three? I don't know either. Shout out to the supplier of today's reference images. Also shout out to their competitor who makes socks. All right, but for real, go get yourself a nice walk and let's keep moving. All right, back at the desk, ready to get going with ye old part three. All right, so I'm back from my walk. I literally took a walk. I put, I even put shoes on to do it, get some inspiration. Um, yeah, I, the ideas are flowing. I'm ready to start adding some detail to this shoe. I think... What I decided I wanted to do next is go ahead and add some more detail to this sole itself. Uh, if your sole is already how you like it and you don't want to do anything else to it, then feel free to move on to the next part. So um, I'll just mention briefly that one way, depending on the design you want, but a lot of cool shoes I've seen online are like crazy, like sculpted shapes. So like, don't be afraid to like get into sculpting, but you're going to get absolutely no help from me in that regard because I'm literally just like a five-year-old when it comes to sculpting, just making like crazy shapes. But this would totally be like one way to make a really sweet um, shoe. And once again, not knowing what I'm doing, I seem to have frozen blender. Um, yeah, that's um, that's not good, but you might like that. So I'm going to undo all that. You know what? I screwed myself up so bad. I'm just going to reload that soul file, but I just wanted to show that you could sculpt if you were so inclined, but go somewhere else to do it. CG Boost has good sculpting tutorials. So let's add some details the Dirk way to this soul. The first thing I wanna do is add an air bubble because when I was in elementary school, if your shoe had air bubbles, you were cool. So the way I'm gonna do that is by selecting these two faces. Again, okay, I won't tell you what vertex edge and face is. I'm gonna press I and inset this face. What that will do is this, it will inset it. So then what I'm gonna do is press E and X to bring this over and it's going through. Maybe I didn't turn clipping back on. Let's bring this over to here and then I'm gonna press X. So we've kind of got like this double wall happening in there now. I'm just gonna press X and delete those faces to get rid of that wall. And I think at this point, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and hide our reference images. So I'm just gonna select them both and then press M to move them to a new collection. And I'll call that new collection reference. And then I'm going to check this box to hide it basically. So now I've got just my shoe in focus, looking good, and I wanna shape out that air bubble a little bit. Now, the first thing I'm noticing is that we've got some kind of bad shading here, and that's a product of this um, bevel weight being applied, so I'm just gonna turn that down to zero. Sometimes if you create new geometry 
off of geometry that had a bevel weight applied, you're going to start to see that get carried over. Now I'm realizing it was a horrible idea to go for a walk because I'm gonna be sniffling and seizing for the entire remainder of this recording. So I apologize for that. So we also need to get rid of the bevel weight in here. Don't be afraid to take a shower as a break as well. Something I might need to do for the next part. Oh my gosh bad. Um, okay, I want to flatten these out. I'm going to press S and Z and zero. Oh, that's bad. Okay, um, that's looking good. And then let's flatten this out as well. S, Z, zero. And then just let's take a look at our side view here, see how we're looking. Okay, so maybe we don't want that totally flat. Maybe that kind of comes up a little bit, something like that. Gosh, the allergies. Okay, um, Austin's cool and all, but dang, the allergies are intense. Okay, so I think that's looking pretty snazzy. I think we'll leave our shoe bubble looking something like that. Now to actually add the bubble in there, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go into my face select mode by pressing three and then alt and left click that ring, press shift D, P to separate that new duplicated portion by selection and then tab out of edit mode. And then let's press F2 and rename that bubble. Good idea to keep naming things as you go just so you can organize things a little better. Now to fill these faces in, I'll press F and then do the same thing here, F. And now we have our bubble. Now you may want it to look like that, but for me, I think I want it to come out a little bit more. So I could do the bevel thing here, but I'm just gonna, I think I'm just gonna add an edge loop. I think that'll be easy enough to work with. Um, and we can remove the bevel modifier because we don't have any bevels applied. Now out here, similarly, I think I do want a little bit of a bevel so that's, that's sharper. Could do that with the bevel weight, but I think that's gonna be too sharp. So I'm just gonna actually do that the manual way with an edge ring there, just pressing Control R and adding that right there. So that's looking pretty good. Now, if you wanted to make this like a little bit tighter up to the top and bottom, you could like S and Z scale on the Z axis, just to kind of press it in there a little bit. Now we'll work with that bubble a little bit more when we get to the shading. But um, for right now, I think that that is a pretty good looking bubble. You're gonna be the coolest cat in elementary school, heaven bubbles in your shoe like that. Now the next thing I want to do is admittedly a little bit ridiculous looking, but I decided to include it just because it looked kind of cool. And since everyone's going to have their own shoe design, I wanted to be able to empower you with the most tools possible. So we're going to go ahead and add in another little detail up here using the same method. So I selected those faces and then press I to inset them. And then let's actually just turn that bell weight down while they're all selected. And then I think what I want to do is kind of like extrude this out so we have a little bit of like a like a wing shape just a you know kind of an interesting little detail you don't have to do this but again just want to show you kind of the, the ways you could add this type of a detail oh god i'm gonna have to be pausing a lot here allergies are getting intense um okay so i got this little detail here now i don't want to pop out quite like that i want it to sort of fade back into the shape and the way i can do that is by Typically you want to avoid triangles, but right here I've got this like top face. Um, but I kind of want this just to come back into the shoe shape. So what I can do is just press G twice to grab it, edge slide it all the way into that other edge. And now what I have is a, a bad thing. I have doubles, so that's essentially uh, one vertex on top of another. Um, so what you can do is press A to select everything and then merge vertices by distance, which will essentially um, move, merge vertices based on a defined distance. And usually the default option will get doubles, vertices right on top of each other, um, but you could drag this up to have it include more until all your vertices are merged into one, which you probably don't wanna do. Similarly, if you're going to be doing that a lot, you could turn on this option here in the top right, which is auto merge vertices, which will automatically merge vertices moved to the same location. Once again, creating a tutorial is me reading tool tips to you. I'm just kidding, there's more to it than that. Um, but I'll turn that on press G twice and then slide that in and then boom, you can see that time it automatically removed those doubles. Um, so this shape is kind of interesting, like it or not, I'll, I'll probably work with it here a little bit more. You know, you could consider adding a, adding some bevel here to give it maybe some like sharpness, like maybe you add in um, some bevel weight from your other modifier. That's interesting, pretty freaking ugly. You could maybe just like slide these into each other a little more to kind of give it some sharpness, something like that instead of the bevel. I'm liking that a little bit more. This can come down maybe, something like that. And yeah, that's starting to look pretty good. Now we kind of have this nice, you know, leading in. We have this sort of swoopy shape moving into 
this part. Um, but we're starting to get a little bit of like kind of weird shading right here. And that's starting to become a problem. That's a product of just having not the best edge flow. So you can see if we tab into edit mode here, I'm scratching my eyes as I do this. We'll see that we have this kind of weird thing happening where there's all these points coming together and it's creating sort of this ugly geometry essentially. Um, if we turned off optimal display, and went into our wireframe view, we can see that we just had these really like bad collisions and stuff. And maybe you didn't know it at the time that you were exactly what you were going to do. But now that I know that I'm having this lead into this, um, I would, it would be really nice if just like this went straight to there and that went straight to there. And we still have this nice edge ring along the bottom. You can see now we've lost our ring along the bottom and instead it's going around the outside of these two sort of objects we created. So the way I think I want to solve that is by just deleting all of these vertices. Let's press X to delete those vertices. And um, this is a little bit terrifying because now our shoe is ruined, but we can just sort of connect things back up. Maybe that's not the way I want to do that. Maybe I want to bevel this. Control B to bevel it. And let's see, that will give us, if we just, no, that's not going to work. I'm not really the best at like edge flow. Um, sometimes what I'll do is just use the knife tool by pressing K and just draw the edges that I want. And when you're doing the knife tool, you then press enter and that will complete the command. And then now I think, what could I do? Now maybe I could bevel these. Control B, bevel that. Okay, now let's try. So we've got our auto merge vertices on. So let's move this up to here, this up to here, this up to here. And then let's move this to here. And then <laughs> let's move... Uh, and then we can get rid of this middle portion, move that to there. And then I think we can move this up to here. And then, yeah, I think now we have better edge flow, maybe, I think. Um, oh, okay, so the bevel is making some things weird here. Let's turn this off and then add it back in right there. So now if we take a look at this, much better edge flow. You can see now we have a nice ring around the bottom right there, or sorry, all the way around the outside when we do that. And yeah, it's just, it's just generally a lot cleaner. So again, you're probably going to run into some issues like that. Uh, sort of a complicated thing to handle. Um, Josh Gambrell, I think, has some really good tutorials on topology. I would check them out if you're getting into some advanced stuff. Um, but for those of you who are sculpting your shoe, you're probably long gone and even more confused than I was trying to do that. Um, so yeah, anyways, this is looking good. I need to blow my nose because it's literally dripping on top of my microphone almost. Okay, so now that I have um, cleared out my nose a little bit, we're, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're just going to keep messing with this until it's kind of in a sort of a cool place here. Um, this is just sort of a sort of a funky, a little bit ridiculous looking detail, but again, just kind of another another place where I can show you some tricks. You know, what if we pulled yeah, you know, what if we pulled this down, see what that looks like. That's kind of cool. I think I like that detail there though. Maybe we pull like this in or something. Oh, that's kind of looking nice. You know, again, I like to let the 3D software blender kind of drive the process here so it's it's kind of fun just to explore of course a lot of you probably already know exactly what you want and you're just sort of going off your sketch but in my case i like to kind of free ball it a little bit have a little bit of fun with um with the shapes here maybe maybe do something like that that's probably going to screw me up later because that is not part of the reference model that i was making but um yeah, I think we can leave it for now. So yeah, this is all looking good. I think I'll leave the soul at that. It's got a little more soul to it now. I should probably look up what like soul actually means if it can be applied to this situation. It's a uh, it's a little bit a little bit fat out here. Maybe we maybe bring that in. Once again, this is the portion of the tutorial where you could where you can pause me and just uh, mess with the shape a little bit until you get it to where you want it and then catch up with me in the next part. So this is looking good. In the next part, we're gonna start adding some detail to the top, the upper of the shoe. And yeah, we'll just, uh, we'll keep moving along and hopefully you guys are having fun, guys, girls, everyone else. Um, I'm having a good time. Don't like what I just did there, undo that. I like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. I'll uh, I'll see you in the next part. I think I should probably go and take a shower because I'm literally miserable right now. Okay, that's um. I think that's looking good. Still a little bit like a clown shoe, which I don't love. Maybe move that in. Maybe this comes up a little bit. Maybe it's time to just move on, Derek. Just leave it. That looks good. We turned off our reference images, so now it's a little easier to kind of really start designing this thing. Um, okay, so I think that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and shift control s to save as my file, and I'll save that as sole detail. In fact, spell one. 
and then I will save Control S. And I think we are all in good shape here. Okay, see you in the next part. Like and subscribe. All right, I'm back. And you can't smell me on the other side of the screen, but uh, I'm nice and clean now. I did take a shower to attempt to curb the um, beautiful allergies I was experiencing. Um, so hopefully, hopefully those are gone for now. I'm going to go ahead and um, keep making changes to things that I already decided I was done with because that's one of my favorite pastimes. Hope you enjoy doing the same. Um, but just, you know, still just kind of using the software to look for unique shapes here. Um, now, this is something I probably should have done beforehand, but um, one way you can really visualize your shapes a little bit better is by using a mat cap. So down, up, down, somewhere, over here is the uh, option to turn on a mat cap. And that's really good. Uh, if you're familiar with maybe like SOLIDWORKS or Rhino, you've probably seen this zebra look before, which is really good for analyzing surfaces and kind of the flow of them. Um, but one that I really like because it kind of starts making me think about color, it's really exciting, is just this like normal appearance. I don't, does it have a name? Studio Normal. Plus why? Yeah, it is called normal. Um, so this, I, th I think this one just looks cool and it kind of shows um, the shape of your object. Now this bubble is looking a little weird. Um, I think that's because when I created it, it sort of thought the inside was the outside sort of situation. So if I just select it all and press shift N, I can recalculate those normals. So yes, that's what that was looking a little bit nicer now. Um, okay. So with that looking all colorful and pretty, let's go ahead and move on to adding in some details on the upper portion of the shoe itself. Hopefully you've got your sole in a nice place, just how you like it. Um, you can of course keep editing it for hours and hours and hours on end, but you would not want to do that unless of course you thought it needed to be adjusted more. Okay, I'm done, I promise, almost. Um, okay, so we're gonna add some details into the upper portion of the shoe here. And the techniques we'll be using here can be applied to many, many things on the rest of the shoe to add detail. But the way we're gonna start is by adding just a little bit of a rim around this outside to kind of just make this seem a little bit more attractive and not so kind of just like running into it itself like it is now. So we're gonna do the same thing we did before and steal a little bit of geometry. Um, I won't go ahead and shift control S to make sure I don't save over my old one. Uh, let's do upper detail one. And let's go ahead and save that. And what I'll do is steal some geometry. So I'm gonna press tab to go into edit mode. And then again, just selecting around the outside here. I'll get these parts because I think that's about where that's gonna go. And press shift D, P to separate it by selection. And then that's a process you should be familiar with by now. Uh, we've got this part, so we can name that um, maybe like soul trim or something like that. Again, F2 is the command to name. Um, so this actually already looks pretty good, um, and you might be tempted to just kind of move things out a little bit. And uh, yeah, you're pretty much in good shape here. But if you were to then go in and start, you know, maybe making some changes to the shape, if you're anything like me and you continuously adjusted things you already decided were done, then that would sort of uh, become start. That would sort of start of become a problem because then you would have to go in and then adjust multiple shapes. Now you can adjust multiple shapes at a time in edit mode in Blender 2.8 and above, but that's still just not the best way to work. So really, it'd be nice if this object was just automatically sucked to, uh, what, what's a word for that, maybe shrink wrapped to the sock portion of our shoe. Well, I'll tell you folks, there's a modifier in Blender called the shrink wrap modifier. Let's go ahead and apply it. You'll see it doesn't do anything. What kind of a modifier is that? Doesn't do anything. No, it does do things. It's got this little red to the icon and anytime you see that in blender that usually means that okay the modifier is here but it's not doing anything it's not giving you its intended results similarly if we turn the subdivision levels down to zero it's going to be like hey got the subdivision on but not doing anything um, so you can see how that turns red so same thing here and in this case what it needs is a target so it needs to know what to shrink wrap to and in that case we can use our little eyedropper here and select our sock object. And now that is perfectly sucked to the shoe, but it is not kind of lost our solidness. And yeah, it's just, uh, it's not right. We need to do a couple things to fix this. So the way the shrink wrap works is it basically takes all the geometry and it will wrap it 
to the defined option here. So right here is nearest surface point. And, and you can change, you can experiment with these different ones, but I find that the default options seem to work pretty well. So because this is at the end of the stack, it's taking all the geometry it has, including the you know subdivided geometry, the solidified geometry, everything. It's wrapping it all straight to that surface. But we don't want that because if it's all wrapped to one surface, you know, for example, the solidify, we can't see it. So what we need to do is again thinking about order here. We need to move the shrink wrap above the solidify so that now it's working even worse. We can't see it at all. It's being shrunk wrapped. Let's see if we yeah we can make that go out the other way. Um, so this is kind of working now. You can see, you know, if we move this, it still stays nice and linked to the surface. Um, but it's kind of, it's like going through the surface. And that's because, again, coming down to order of modifiers. So it's being mirrored, and then it's being shrink-wrapped, and then it's being solidified. So if we were to disable these, you'll see that the point at which it's being shrunk-wrapped is when it only has this much geometry to work with. So it's taking this point and putting it there, this point putting it there, this point putting it there, and so on. But that's just not enough. So when that gets um, solidified and then subdivided, it's, it's it just doesn't have enough geometry. So this is getting rounded over and it's not consistent with that surface. So what I'm trying to say here is that the subdivision actually needs to happen first. So it needs to have a similar amount of geometry to attach it to the surface in a nice even way. So if we turn that subdivision back on, let's drag that above the shrink wrap. So now you can see that this is working much more as expected. You can see that this surface, you know, this, this weird shading is basically showing us that those, um, those faces are right on top of each other. And you wanna have a similar level of subdivision here. So, you know, if this was lower, it wouldn't necessarily fit as well. Controversially, if it was higher, it would fit even better. But you know it's more geometry than it needs essentially because this is only so much geometry too. Um, so really, you want these to be about the same. So let's just turn that back down to three. So it's being mirrored, then it's being subdivided, which is giving it all that additional geometry, and then it's getting shrunk wrapped to the surface. Shrink wrapped. I don't know what the heck the name is. And then we want it to be solidified. So let's go ahead and turn that back on. So now we're getting much more expected results. But of course, if we um, if we shade this flat, we can see that it's not um, it's not it's not rounded anymore, which I like. And I actually just I brought up a quick favorite here, which is the auto smooth option. So if, if I'm shading smooth and I have auto smooth on, it's going to detect similar to the way the bevel does. It's going to detect sharp edges. Now I have that saved as a quick favorite, but if you want to access that, it's down here in the normals. And if you wanted to add it to your quick favorites, you could right click and then. Um, add to quick favorites. You can see mine says remove from quick favorites. And the hotkey to bring up your quick favorites is Q. And auto smooth is the only quick favorite I have because I use it a lot. And uh, yeah, it's the only one I've decided so far is worth adding. Um, so to round that back over, we could add in another um, subdivision. You know, of course you don't want to put it after it. So we'd have to add another one. Um, so that would then make this start to get a little bit high poly. Um, but that that's one solve is to have that subsurf happening after. You can see uh, I'll turn off my auto smooth. Um, so that that's one way that that works pretty well. Uh, you could also do that with a uh, bevel modifier, add modifier, bevel, and then here the default value. So when that's solidified, it's essentially creating a 90 degree angle. So this could be turned up pretty high, almost 290, but I'll just leave it at 60. And honestly, the default 30 works fine. And then you could add like another segment. And then you could sort of run it into itself. Let's just, sometimes it's easier to see this when it's shaded flat. Um, so if we adjust this very finely, and you can hold shift, by the way, to make your adjustment a little bit more fine-tuned. Um, so that would be one way to get that working. Um, we could, you know what, though? I think I like the subsurf method a little bit more. I'm going to delete that and then just add in a subdivision surface and we'll just let that have um, one level of subdivision and then we'll shade it smooth um, and if we turn on our okay we don't need auto smooth on us at that point um, but this is looking good now if you wanted to have it not poking out so far you could change the offset on your solidify to kind of bring it in a little bit or the shrink wrap also has a similar option to move it away from or into the surface it's shrink wrapping to 
Now, if we zoom out here, I think we'll probably run into some problems I could bring up to address with you. Um, okay, so it looks like not, but sometimes this offset is a good way to address any um, issues. Like if you have geometry that's like going through, then the shrink wrap starts to be confused. It's like, okay, am I shrink wrapping to the inside or the outside? Um, so when it's zero, you don't really see that. But when it's um, anything other than zero, you can start to see that that's a problem. So if you do run into a problem like that, it's probably that something needs to be um, further away. It, it's intersecting your um, projected two mesh. Um, but I'll put that back down at zero. And then now the fun part, which it took forever for me to get to, is that you can just move um, these things around and yeah, it's gonna look, it's gonna shrink wrap it to the surface. So you have um, a lot of freedom here. Now, again, be careful not to go through the mesh because then you're gonna have problems. And because this is being shrink wrapped, you can actually move these pretty far away from the mesh. And I would actually advise you to keep it a little bit off the mesh just to make sure you don't run into any problems, but you don't want it so far um, because then you'll start to get some like tearing. You can see if I move this way out here, it's still kind of working, but it's just, it's having a hard time putting that in exactly the right place. Um, but you can see that um, with this tool, we can add all sorts of detail. You know, you can use this to create um, a logo, like a like a swoosh or something, or um, what, whatever you want. Really, this is a this is a really powerful method for adding kind of surface level detail to the shoe. So I'm just going to pull this down. Again, we are back in another portion of the tutorial where I am just kind of doing my thing here. Um, now, if you wanted to, you could add in like you know more more geometry to kind of like make that come up and around or something like that. Um, but I think I'm fine without that. <laughs> so um, this shading is getting a little bit weird. Let's delete that edge loop. Okay, I think that's back to looking fine. Um, you know, maybe this part comes up a little bit, and it can be a little confusing because this because we're not wrapping to this object, we're wrapping, wrapping to the sock object. So this is gonna start to go sort of under the mesh a little bit, uh, but that's totally fine. Just be, uh, just note that as you're, uh, as you're making some of your changes here. So I'm just kinda designing as I go here. Um, that's, I can't decide if I like that little detail up there. I think I'll leave it. Um, but I'm just sort of kinda trying to create some interesting flow lines, but again, design your shoe however you like. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing, but if you wanna be extra certain to not run into any problems, then my best advice probably is going to be to copy what I'm doing. So I'm just moving this over. Um, this probably needs to come like under here a little bit more. It can get a little confusing with the shrink wrap because it's automatically being sucked to the surface. It can be a little bit confusing where your geometry actually is. So just keep an eye on it. But yeah, I think this is looking pretty good for me for that portion. Now we can use this same tool again, like I said, to add additional details. So I could do this in the same object, but I'm gonna press Shift D to duplicate it. And you can see how the shrink wrap is still trying to suck it to that surface. Right click, and then now I just have this object, and then I'm just gonna select a face here, and then X to delete faces, just so that I have this singular face here. And then I'm gonna use this to just kind of add, you know, maybe another additional detail. So just pressing E to extrude, and then, you know, we kind of need to move this out a little bit, it looks like. And then we can rotate that, something like that. And I'm just kind of creating this little sort of swooshy esque detail that you see on some shoes nowadays. Something like this, maybe scale this down, maybe come around this way, and you're gonna need to probably pull that in a little bit so it doesn't get too far from your mesh, but you can see the shrink wrap is doing a lot of the heavy lifting for us here. Still looking pretty good. And then maybe, you know, this comes like around here, and I think, yep, okay, the mirror is working properly. Okay, so something like that, I think is kind of cool. But you don't have to think it's cool because you're doing your own shoe and it doesn't need to be Dirk approved. Don't forget to tag me when you do make your shoes. Love to see them, see what you come up with. Um, okay, so that's kind of a nice little detail. I like that a lot. Now you could adjust, you know, the, 
the thickness on some of these to be a little bit thicker or thinner depending on exactly what it is but i think that that is gonna be pretty good for me so we'll leave that detail at that now i think the next thing i want to do is you know maybe maybe we even maybe we get crazy here let's extrude this up sort of make like a toe cap and then maybe remove this over okay so now we've got that tearing issue so this is going to need to come out gy and then maybe this can like come in like that see what that looks like that's kind of how i had it in my reference model eh, i don't know if i like that let's get rid of at least that portion maybe we can leave that one though that's looking cool in the next part yeah we're gonna add maybe some like more hard surface details maybe add a strap i don't know there's lots left we can do here um so i'll see what we want to do next but thank you all for being here thank you for watching hope you've enjoyed this part and i'll see you in the next all right so i did not do any showers or walks <laughs> between recording this part and the last part but uh just had to let you know that um but what i'm going to do now i decided is well besides my usual like adjusting little things here um what i decided i wanted to do next was create the tread on the bottom of the shoe um, I like to just progress in a way that, you know, if you were to drop off, you would have a more complete shoe. And I decided if we were working more on the upper, then this smooth bottom would probably be bothering some people. So the way I'm going to do that is, again, by stealing some geometry. So in our sole object here, and I just realized I've got a, a non-named piece, upper detail one is what we're going to call that. I'm going to steal some geometry from my sole object here. So selecting that face and then all the way down the line to there, selecting that, shift D, P to separate by selection. And now we have a new piece that we can start building our tread with. Uh, now the mirror modifier, we obviously want bevel. We can probably get rid of for now. Subdivision, I think we do also want that. Um, okay, so the way I'm gonna do this, and again, lots of ways to do things, but I'm going to essentially chop up this piece into sort of a tread pattern. Now you could build out like a crazy file in Illustrator and shrink wrap that to the surface, but the way I'm gonna be doing it here is a little bit simple. Um, it's a little, mostly just because it's quick, it's kind of an easy way to build out sort of an interesting bottom detail. But I think what I'll do is first of all, just move this off to the side a little bit, just so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. And then I think I'm going to tab to go into edit mode and then just sort of, yeah, chop this up into sort of a unique shape. Now, um, seven will go into my top view, control seven will go into my bottom view. Again, don't forget you've got these little tools up here to also do that. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna turn off the bevel weight here just so that doesn't mess us up. We don't have a bevel modifier on, so it wouldn't, but, um, and wow, this is really, looking clowny from the bottom, which by the way, if at any point you did want to stop working symmetrically, just apply the mirror modifier and then um, make your adjustments on the other side. But that's something that I may like not even do in this tutorial, but it's as simple as that. Just apply the mirror and then you can do things differently on the other side. Um, but what I'm gonna do is sort of chop this up and just kind of try to create some sort of interesting details here. Now I'm using the knife tool just to sort of slice through this mesh and then you know maybe we do like a little triangle shape here really just kind of estimating what I want here. I'm just drawing some sort of unique lines. Again you probably want to spend more time on this section in particular um, okay, that's not what I wanted, but I'll go with it. Um, and then it's probably a good idea to just press enter to uh, clear out the modifier there. Or sorry, when you're in the knife tool, you press enter to complete the command. And yeah, let's just let's just slice this bad boy up a little bit more. Um, and then what about like that? Okay, so there is sort of just a ridiculous pattern. But again, we're going for a little bit of speed here because you know, you can, you can do the soul however you want. I know everyone's going to do it a little bit differently, but what I like to do next is uh, go into, I think I want to be in edge select, maybe face select mode here. Press control B to bevel, which will create these little 
gaps in all of those lines that I added. So if we just move that out a little bit and then press X, we'll delete those faces. Um, I think I, I wanted to be in face like mode so that those were still selected. Um, so now that has created a pretty wild tread. Now we've got immediately some issues with the mirror. So I'm gonna select all these and just bring them over so that they line up. Um, similarly, I don't want these attached. So I could, I think the command is gonna be rip, which rip vertices, V is the command there, which will just separate them. Cause I don't, that's gonna create problems for me. So let's try using our hockey V. Learned a new hockey today. I'm just gonna pull these out a little bit. Um, look for any other places where that's happening. V to rip it, which yeah, ripping is basically just like, like, hey, let's, Let's keep, keep one and add another type of situation there. Okay, so I think I've got it all ripped up. Oh, we got a little, we gotta do a little more ripping here. Okay, so if you want a super organic looking sole, you could probably leave it like that. And then you would just add in a solidify to give it its thickness. Maybe you'd have it go the other way. And then you could just bring that back over. And a lot of times when I'm doing things like that, like moving objects, I make sure to hold control so that I can just snap it right back into place. Um, if you accidentally moved it off into a weird area without holding control, um, rather than trying to eyeball it, um, you could just, since we've been duplicating these objects off of one another, they have the same origins. So we can press Shift S, snap our cursor to selected, which it was already there, and then Shift S on this one and snap selection to cursor. And that would move it right back to where it goes. Um, so that's kind of an interesting thing. You might want something like that. Of course, you're welcome to leave it like that, but I'm gonna show you how to keep it a little bit more geometric looking, which by the way, let's go ahead and add in our shrink wrap modifier. We are gonna use that here and shrink wrap it to the sole object. So again, same problem we had before. Shrink wrap needs to go above, essentially you want your mesh to be pretty much like 2D when you're adding the shrink wrap and then any geometry creation you want to happen after that. So in this case, that's the solidify. Um, so now it's being uh, properly shrunk wrapped. And because we duplicated it from the other object, it's lined up pretty well. Um, but if, if you needed to, like it might start kind of coming over the edge. Um, so some things you might need to like pull in a little bit just to keep them away from those edges, like that type of thing right there. Okay, so that's looking fine. So the problem we have here is that once we added all those cuts, these things are getting rounded because it, you know it's just rounding this corner here essentially in all these tread pieces. But we do need to have that subdivision there so that it gets sucked properly to the surface. So what we can do is instead of, so subdivision normally in this Catmull Clark option will smooth things out. However, there is another subdivision option, which is the simple subdivide, which what that does is just, it slices the mesh into finer pieces without smoothing anything out. So that works well for maintaining a, um, a more geometric look. And we probably only need maybe two there. It just needs to kind of, it just needs enough to follow that surface. You can see if we don't have the subdivision on, then it's just not gonna not going to have as easy of a time wrapping to that mesh because this is such a detailed and smooth mesh. This needs to be similarly detailed and smooth. So with that on, I think we're looking pretty good. Now what I want to do is, you know, you, you could start making some more adjustments here. Like maybe, maybe you would want to like turn off flipping and then maybe like move this apart, just sort of create some separation there. Maybe these need to get pulled further apart so you don't get that weird doubled up action. This is looking a little bit funky. I think it's because it's too thick. So let's make this uh, a little bit less thick, a little less solid, bring that down a tad. Yeah, I think something like that looks good. Now, if you wanted to, okay, so we've got even more issues here. Let's move this up a little bit, or I guess we need to move both these up a little bit and then maybe in a little bit. Again, that's a that's a deal with the, the subdivide. Now, if you didn't want it, you, you don't necessarily have to do the shrink wrap. You could like, like if you wanted to, you could hide the shrink wrap here. And you could like make this go like down or something like if you wanted it to bridge that gap again ton, tons of options at any point here uh, ways you can do things a little bit differently um so this is looking good i think we'll um we'll do that now it is getting some weird shading you know you could turn on auto smooth to make that super sharp but i don't want that i would like those to be a little bit rounded um, so what i could do is add another subdivision which is going to round it a little bit 
but not quite as much because it has been subdivided once. So now instead of rounding around this whole you know, edge here, it's rounding around what's produced by the simple subdivide. A little bit confusing, but just follow, follow with me. So I actually, I think I kind of like that rounded look. If you didn't want that rounded look, then what you could do is add a bevel. So you could, um, you could have, instead of the subdivision, you could add in a bevel modifier. And then with the default options, I think that that would look pretty good. Um, so yeah, okay, that's, it is getting some edges there. So we would probably want to turn this up closer to 90. So I think, yeah, is that, is that working? I mean, you could even do both. You could do the bevel and the subdivide, but I kind of like that, um, a slightly rounded look. So I think I'll add back in my subdivision surface and you could name modifiers to keep them organized, but I literally, literally never do that. Um, so you shouldn't either. I'm just kidding. It's probably a good thing to do, but I just don't do it if I'm being honest. Um, so this is looking cool. Um, maybe this gets pulled a little bit off the edge, so it's not so far. And this could come like, oh wait, I forgot I turned off my clipping. That's kind of nice. Um, do we want to do that on more portions? Like maybe here? Just separate things a little more. That kind of looks nice. Just gives us a little more detail. So again, this is a sort of simple way to create a sole, or sorry, a tread detail. You don't have to do it like this, but it just, it's it's pretty fast, it's pretty easy, and you know, depending on how much of the shoe you're gonna see, you may not need to worry about that, but it does look nice. And you could even add in another like portion here. So we could do the same thing we did. Let's just select this, Shift D, duplicate it, P, separate by selection, and then lose the bevel, add in a solidify, make that go the other way, give it some thickness, maybe pull it in a little bit with that offset, and then make it a little thinner. Just adding like another little layer there could be an interesting thing. And you know, honestly, that should probably also be shrunk wrap well i guess it doesn't need to be because it's part of it's from the same geometry so it shouldn't really need it but if you're running into issues just the the more familiar you are with all these modifiers uh, it's going to help you a lot in addressing any detail or any errors you may run into so like right there we can see that that's a product of the shrink wrap trying to wrap around the edge a little too much um, you know, so maybe these get pulled in a little Again, making small adjustments here, just getting it exactly the way you like it. Um, so I think I will leave that at that. Um, I'll name this tread, and then I'll name this um, tread top or something like that. And then I will press Control S to save. And now I have that done. So there is your treads completed on your shoe. Spend as much time or as little time as you want on that. Maybe you're not going to show the bottom and it's irrelevant to you. Hope you skipped the section. Actually, no, I hope you watched it because you might have learned something anyways. Uh, but anyways, hope everyone is having a beautiful day, enjoying following along with this tutorial. And yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next part where we are going to, it's a mystery. I don't know, I'll have to think about what's the uh, best next part. Probably adding some like little straps and stuff. Who knows, but I'll see you there. Like and subscribe. Your shoe is looking beautiful, by the way. And we're back. Don't forget to get up, stretch your legs, take showers if you're sneezing. And <laughs> yeah, so I think what I wanna do next is, first of all, something I have ignored, I wanna add in an inner portion of the shoe just to give this a little bit of thickness. Um, so the way I'll do that is uh, press Shift D to duplicate this. And then this is where I'm crossing my fingers, hoping my solidify, okay. So had I made the other solidify go out, then I would have just had to make this one go in, but I did not do that. So we need to, uh, we need to kind of, we want that inner geometry that's created by the solidify on the original mesh. And then we want to solidify it again, but inside. Um, so the way I can do that is by, let's just go and apply our 
mirror modifier, and then let's also apply the solidify modifier. So what we want, yeah, is this inner this inner portion of the mesh that's been created by the solidify. Um, so I want to get rid of the outer portion. So the way I could do that is just Alt and left click to select sort of this outer ring. Um, now it would be difficult to select all of these outer ones just manually, but I can just select this outer ring, delete those vertices, because that's kind of where they loop over and connect. Um, so what I have now is essentially like, oh, and we've got, oh, we just had like an extra vertex there. Um, so now what we've got is kind of like two pieces. So if we like move this over, we've got two pieces there. So one's the inner and then one is, because we deleted those vertices around the outside, we've got two pieces here. Now to select islands, like floating pieces of mesh that are not connected, you can press L while hovering over it and then X and delete those vertices. And now we can just move this back in and then let's add back in our, well, first of all, let's add in our mirror modifier. So let's delete this side, vertices, add modifier, mirror, which we will want to put, well, not necessarily. If you wanted rabbit ears, you could leave that. Huh. Do we want rabbit? No, I don't want rabbit ear shoes. Okay, so we want to put this mirror above the subdivision, and then we want to add in a solidify, which will also go above the subdivision. And let's give that some thickness. And then here's where I was talking about, just go in with it. Um, now, if you wanted that to be a little more tight up, you could kind of change this offset a little bit. Which, wait, yeah, that's why it makes, I, I said earlier that it was stupid that they had a thickness and the offset, but it's not, you need that. <laughs> um, so this is good. Now, depending on if your mesh might have accidentally changed at some point and it's poking through, you might need to like delete some inner portions. But for me, this is working. Um, I think what I'll do is maybe just like, maybe just bring this down a little bit, push it in. Now this is not being shrunk wrap to the inside. This is a separate mesh all on its own. Um, so we can detail this kind of how we please. Like maybe I'll, maybe I'll pull this in, do something like this. Just kind of give it sort of its own, sort of its own detailing. You know, you could even have this go up maybe right there. Oh, and we need to turn on clipping. Maybe like this goes out. That might be, might be more than I bargained for. Let's get rid of that. <laughs> um, so this is cool. You know, you could See now, this was the advantage of working with the shrink wrap is that now we can change this mesh and everything else is going to change with it. Um, so I think everything is pretty much good there. You know, maybe we just sort of like slide little pieces like this down just to let that reveal a little bit more. Now I don't think I'm going to end up adding anything in the in the sole of the or the sorry the inner portion of the shoe. Sorry, Doctor Scholl, um, but. Yeah, you, I'm just not going to see it, but you you could do that by you know doing sort of the same thing we did on the sole down here. Um, but I think what I got here is looking good for that little part. Now what I want to do is add a little bit of like a some hard surface details where I can connect a um, like a strap or something like that. So the way I'll do that is as always just stealing some geometry, Shift D to duplicate this, and then select everything, and then just deselect something around where I want and then delete the faces. Uh, really, the main reason I do that is just to automatically add the mirror modifier, which is sort of a silly way to save time, but it's how I like to do it. Um, so yeah, this is going to be sort of a, a hard surface detail again happening on both sides because of our mirror modifier. Um, and yeah, this will just be like a little bit of a strap or like a connection detail, just something to kind of break up this organic shape again. Design decisions are all your own. So solidify is going to be something I want to do just to give this a little bit of thickness. Um, and then we can, um, let's turn it auto smooth. We can maybe like make this whole portion down here. Let's do E and X and just kind of give that, you know, just like a nice place for our strap to kind of go into. Um, you could have your strap, you know, poke through, which I don't know, maybe, I'd, maybe I'll try that. Maybe I'll have the strap poke through. We'll see. Again, you can make changes after the fact. Let's move that in. Um, now, it looks a little bit wonky if you don't have even thickness on, so I usually like to use that, but there might be some cases where you don't want that. Um, now, so that it's not so sharp, I'll add in a bevel. Maybe give it two or three segments. Move this down. 
yeah, just sort of like that. And then maybe in the side view, just kind of position this how I want. You know, maybe I want this bottom portion to be flat, just to kind of break up our shapes there. Which yeah, that's not really working. Not really working with my designs. Kind of ruining my my cool detail. Maybe we maybe we adjust that cool detail and bring it down a little bit more, or maybe over a little bit more. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know how I feel about it. I think we can let that come over. That's probably fine, right? Maybe something like that. Maybe we leave it. I like it being flat on the bottom like that, but I don't like how it looks. <laughs> um, okay, so let's pull this like maybe out, bring this whole thing in a little bit. We won't know exactly where it needs to be until we actually add that strap detail, but I think for now, that'll be good. And I'm really not gonna worry too much about how that's actually connected. I'm just wanting to add sort of a little bit of interest that breaks up that organic shape. Now I'll do the same thing to add a little detail in the back. So uh, I might do that in the same object. Um, so let's, yeah, let's just do it in the same object. So let's just grab this shift D Y and then move this over. And then I want this to be straight. So I'll do S X zero. The other one's automatically straight because of the mirror modifier clipping. We just ran it into it self. And since the mirror axis is straight, this is also straight. And then, okay, so this is the danger of making it the same object is that when I select everything, it's going to get that too, which I need to remember not to do accidentally. Um, so then back here, maybe just adding in sort of a little, another little detail, maybe just to kind of like enclose this part, E, Y, something like that. I think that looks nice. Um, maybe, well, I think this might need to be a little bit thinner. Let's, uh, let's press L to select that. P separated by selection. No, so now this is its own part. Now let's name this um, strap connect. And then we can name this one something like um, back connect. You don't have to follow my naming conventions. They're not very well thought out. So the reason I separated it is because I wanted this to be a little bit thinner. And you may have noticed we are not working in a real world scale. Sorry to those of you who that bothers, but I just don't care. I'm making shoes that look cool, not shoes that someone actually needs to 3D print and wear. But if you were gonna be 3D printing them, you better make sure they're accurate. Now, you know, you can just kind of style this, maybe bring that down a little bit, maybe bring that out a little bit. I don't know, do what you want. I think that that looks cool. Now the details I'm adding here are quite simple, I must say, but you know, you can use this same process to add all sorts of details all over your shoe. Well, you can do that with anything here really, is, is, is kind of just take the same, and that's really what I'm doing. So the, eh, what I'm doing with this tutorial is just trying to show you um, sort of a variety of tools that you can have at your disposal to create whatever you have in that beautiful head of yours. Um, okay, so maybe we'll leave that for now. I think that's a cool little detail. Now I will go ahead and in this same section, probably just go ahead and add a, like a strap across the back and then we can also add a little uh, pull tab in the back. So let's add in a mesh. Um, should we steal geometry again? Should we steal? Let's steal. Um, Shift D to duplicate this and then A, X, delete those faces. And then just bring this in, maybe make it a little bit thinner, and then maybe make it a little bit smaller so that it fits in our little strap holder there. Actually, yeah, this made a lot of sense to steal the geometry because now it kind of matches. And then what I'll do is, okay, so we've got mirror, yes, solidify, yes, bevel. Let's turn it off for now. And yeah, let's, I think we are gonna want a subdivision surface though, but let's add that when we get to it. So now I need to, um, just go ahead and extrude this up and then over and then over, just kind of making our strap detail, which now we need to sort of do some manual positioning. Oops. You could do this with the shrink wrap and then apply the shrink wrap and then make um, some changes. But the reason I'm doing this sort of manually is instead of with a shrink wrap is that I actually want this to be a little bit off the surface. I don't want it to be perfectly attached to our surface. So now we are going to want to add in, well, I am going to want to add in a subdivision surface, which I will put above the solidify so that it's subdivided and then beveled, or sorry, subdivided and then solidified. So now I think, what it, didn't I leave a little gap down here? I was going to do that. Did I do that? Maybe we pull this out. Gosh, I just don't know about this little, does that angle need to happen? Maybe we just let that angle happen. Um, okay, so let's go back into this object. 
I thought it'd be kind of cool to maybe have it poking out the bottom. So let's do that. Let's go out like that. And then to make that so it's not so rounded, which you could leave it rounded if you wanted, you can add a crease to like these edges, which will essentially make it ignore the subdivision right there. Um, so creasing is a good tool for that. Um, but what I want to do now is just sort of get this working a little better. I think the shape is okay, um, but I want to give this a little bit of a, a little bit extra flair. So I'm pressing Control R and adding an edge ring, or sorry, an edge loop, which I'll just bring this down, bring this up, um, maybe bring this up and out a little bit. So this is just kind of some manual placement, not using the shrink wrap modifier. And that's because we don't want it to be perfectly sucked to the mesh. We want to have a little bit of control over what's happening there. Um, so now this needs to be out there, but then I want it to, I'm kind of envisioning this as like an elastic, so I want it to be tight. So then maybe I add an edge ring right there. Maybe this one moves down a little bit out. Again, just add detail as needed um, to get it to the shape you want. Um, so I think something like that's fine. And then maybe I do add in my bevel. So let's add a bevel, maybe give it uh, two segments and we can shade this smooth. Let's add another uh, subsurf. Now this is nice. So now where we added that edge ring, we've kind of got a little bit of a, a connection detail there where you can see where it's being sort of, it just kind of helps selling that elastic looking effect. So this is cool. And then yeah, like right here, it's like in the middle, it's sort of sucked tightly to the mesh, but then you have this sort of kind of flare up at the uh, the top and bottom. I think that looks nice. We'll leave that for the strap. Now I'll, I'm going to try to cover some methods where you could, you, you could also use to do laces, um, which is something I'm sure some of you will want to do. I'm not going to mainly because I just, I think <laughs> shoes with straps look cool. Um, but also that this is obviously a little bit easier than creating laces, but we will um, hopefully go over some techniques that you could use to make laces if you so desired. Um, so that's looking good. I'll, uh, because this has all the same modifiers pretty much that I want, I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it and then tab to go into edit mode and then just bring it back. And I'm going to create a, let's see, I'm just gonna, I can basically just delete everything except for, once again, me trying to save a stupid amount of time. I can press control I to select an inverse. And then I'm going to use this to create a little, uh, a little pull tab on the back. Um, so let's do the same thing we did before SX zero. Uh, I think I extruded SX zero to straighten that out. And then we could do like a S Y zero to straighten that out. And now we should have a nice even probably would have been much faster had I just added a thing instead of just <laughs> manually turning this into a plane. Uh, okay. That looks good. Let's pull this in and then pull this in and then let's just go ahead and make a little, like a little pull tab, just pressing E to extrude. Don't need too much detail here, but just enough, you know, in tighter curves, you need to add a little bit more. And then I want this to kind of sink back up with that. Like it's kind of sewn to it right there. And then maybe that comes through and then we can kind of match our little, our little detail over there with that coming through. I think that's a, that's a pretty cool little thing. If you ask me, uh, maybe we can get rid of that edge loop it's a little bit too much i want it to stay pretty smooth um yeah i think this is good you know like you could have this like like so do it right there if you wanted it's kind of gets confusing which ones you're selecting but i think that that looks pretty good we'll just leave it for now um now you could do the same thing we did on the strap kind of and just maybe select or maybe just select these vertices g and z and just give it a little bit of a little bit of a flare there, a little flare there. Um, now with this one, you could do the crease method, or you can also just add in a add in an edge loop. But I think I'll just leave that one sort of rounded off. And you know what? Maybe we leave this one rounded off too. Let's just select everything and clear out the crease. Um, maybe this does get an edge loop though, just so it's a little bit smoother. And then let's turn off our auto smooth. Um, are we going to need more subdivision? Maybe we just need more bevel. Oh, I think the bevel might be running into itself. You see that little crease there? That's the bevel running into itself. Doop, don't want that. Um, I think that is looking dandy. So in this portion, we covered the little hard surface details here. And then we also covered that little strap detail. And oh my gosh, I think we also did that, I think. This is probably a long section, but um, hope you all are enjoying as always. And 
like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next part where we are going to mystery. I don't know either. Um, but this shoe is really coming along. Don't forget to save. Uh, don't forget to show your friends, show your dog, show your mom, show them all. Um, this is looking looking good. I'm, I'm enjoying the way this is coming together. Um, so yeah, like and subscribe. See you in the next part. All right. Welcome and congratulations for making it this far. This is going to be the last portion of the modeling section where I'm just going to try to show you a few more little details, little things we can do, introduce you to a few more hotkeys, commands, modifiers, things like that. Um, just so that we can have our shoe be as detailed and uh, friendly as possible to all the people who you're trying to impress. So, and maybe we move that out a little bit because it's not looking the way. It's not looking the way I like it. Yeah, maybe move this along. Okay, no, we'll leave that. I'm going to show you details, not continue at making adjustments. So, the first detail I want to add is going to be using a boolean modifier to cut some air vents kind of into the front of the shoe. That's something I've seen on a lot of popular shoes on my mood boards, things like that. So let's press shift A to add in a cube. Now I know you've seen me stealing a lot of geometry, but I kind of decided that that's pretty much a big waste of time when all I want is like a simple plane or something. So I'm going to add in a modifier. Let's add the mirror modifier. Maybe it is worth uh, stealing the geometry so I don't have to find the mirror modifier every time. No, but for real, this looks good. So what we're gonna do is, yeah, just create sort of whatever shape you want to cut some air vents. Maybe you don't want air vents. Maybe you're already skipping ahead. Maybe I'm just talking into the void right now. Um, but this looks good. I'm just gonna add some kind of, you know, high speed air vents. We want our digital person to be super, super speed. Um, so I'm just going to put that somewhere around there. Shift D, Y. Just kind of drawing out in the top view the pattern I want. Move that up. And then I can press Shift R to repeat an action. And then maybe I, you know, select all these. And then Shift D. You kind of go up at a high speed angle. Shift R, repeat that action. Cutting into the object. I think something like that is going to be good for me. So to actually apply this Boolean modifier, we are going to need to add it. So on our sock object, we'll add our boolean modifier and then if you recall we've got the little red thing going on there modifier is on the object but not doing anything so we're going to use that little eyedropper and select the cube there now we can see that uh, for one i'm going to need to rename that cube to something like cutter rename it freddy jason edward whatever your uh, favorite hack and slash horror character is or just name it cutter that's what i normally name it uh, so we can see it's doing something here um, but it's hard to tell exactly what. And so that we can see a little better what it's doing, we can go into our object properties here and then change the viewport display on this object. Of course, we can't just delete it from the scene. We, we do still need it in there, at least for now. Um, but we can change this display as from texture to bounds. Basically what that is is the highest fidelity at which an object will be displayed in the viewport. So it didn't have a texture on it and we didn't see a texture, um, so obviously we weren't seeing a texture, but had it had a texture, you would have seen that. But of course, with it at bounds, then we're just going to see this bounding box essentially around where the object is. So now we still, of course, have that weird shading. And that's because this object is shaded smooth, which we still want. But we want those particular edges sharp. So I'm just going to turn on my auto smooth, which again is in my quick favorites. If it's not in yours, then you can go down here into your normals section on the object data properties and check that box. And that will work pretty well for you. So. I'm liking the way that looks. I think the next thing I want to do is just maybe add a little um, detail kind of around the bottom here just to sort of break this edge up a little bit more. And the way I'm going to do that is with a skin modifier. So I'm going to press Shift D on this object. I will be stealing a little geometry. And now I kind of want an edge just sort of running through the middle of all this. And I don't have that edge, so I'm going to add it. Uh, press Control R to add an edge loop. And then with that still selected, I can press Control I to select the inverse, delete those vertices. So now we're just left with this one edge and we will add in our skin modifier. So let's go and add that. And that's what it does. It kind of just creates a, it kind of creates geometry out of nothing. So it just sort of adds this cube shape around that edge that we had. Um, now it does tend to come in a little bit big. So what you can do is in edit mode, you'll actually see this little red dotted circle here. That's sort of the radius that your skin is. Um, but if we select everything and press control A, 
and just kind of move our mouse in towards the median point, we will um, we can control the size of that skin. And of course, these options are also up here. You've got X and Y. You can control them independently. But I usually am going for a sort of like a tube shaped object. So I just leave them at the same. So get that to about what you want. Of course, you can adjust it more later. Uh, and now let's take a look at our modifier stack here. So of course, remembering things go in order. We like the mirror, we'll leave that. We like the subdivision, we'll leave that. We like the shrink wrap, we'll leave that. But I think maybe we'll switch it to wrap to the sole trim object. And then subdivision, yes, I think we will need another one, but uh, we don't need the solidify actually. So, okay, yeah, I thought that was looking a little bit odd. So it was trying to solidify it, which I don't really need because it's just a, a one dimension line. So I've got that on there. Now to smooth this out, because remember the skin modifier just kind of adds a sort of a cube around the outside. I want to smooth it with a subdivision, but of course the subdivision would then need to be after the skin. And then you could right click to shade it smooth and find that it doesn't work. And that's because when you're using a skin modifier, for some reason, there's this little checkbox that you need to use. So check that and it will become smooth. And then what we can do is just sort of position it wherever we want, move this around. And while I'm doing this, I'll mention that if you are using a skin modifier, it creates sort of a ton of edge loops. So you need to have a pretty good amount of subdivision before it's skinned. And then of course you're gonna need more after it if it's gonna be smooth. So um, if you're skin is looking a little weird like if this was if your first subdivision was too low you might start to get this kind of boxy look but just make sure it's pretty high and then you know one more subdivision after the fact is not a bad idea to get it smoothed out a little bit so i'm just gonna move this over till it's sort of where i want it don't love that maybe i'll just subdivide this give myself a little extra geometry to work with Move that in, move this up, move this out. I think something like that is going to do it for me. I don't need this to be totally where it is there. Something like that I think will look good. Um, okay, so that's just another nice little detail we have there to, yeah, just impress people with how detailed your model is. That's really what we're doing here, just kind of adding easy to add little details that are kind of up the quality just a little bit. So the thing that I think I want to show you how to do next is my method for adding stitching, which doesn't work well in all cases. A lot of times using curves with array objects would be something to look into, which if you want to have a lot of stitching on your shoe, I would look into that. Um, I'm sure there's some really good tutorials on YouTube already about doing stitching. Follow along with some of those, but I'm going to show you the Dirk super fast method for adding stitching and that's going to be by essentially using an edge loop that we already have and then creating the stitching from that. So this would be something that uh, you want to make sure you're not going to change your shape too much more uh, when you do but let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to use this object and just add sort of a single threading detail just to sort of show you quickly how you could do something like that. So let's press shift D to duplicate that and then I want to go ahead and apply pretty much all of these modifiers because I want raw access to that original geometry. Let's, we can probably leave off that subdivision for now. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is just sort of select, this is kind of nasty geometry. I'm gonna select a sort of a singular edge, you know, and I think this geometry is nasty because it is, okay, so this, how many total subdivisions? So this sock object has a total of three subdivisions and then this object, has a total of three, four subdivisions. So let's bump this up one more. Maybe we bump it up up here. That's not doing anything good for us. Subdivide, shrink wrap, subdivision. Maybe that's not what it is. Three levels, one level, three levels, something. Okay, wait, that did it. Just bumping it up right there, right? That was three, there's four. Okay, now it's better. It also fixed our little problem up there. So this is a little bit cleaner. Let's use that object. Shift D. Um, let's go ahead and apply, 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 and we'll not apply that one for now. Okay, that looks much nicer. So we can use this object. Let's just select a nice ring we have, which those are still a little funky. You could, of course, kind of manually move them after. Uh, let's select those two rings right there, actually. We'll use both of them. And then what I want to do is select the inverse X, delete those vertices. So now we just have these two rings. Um, now I don't want the ring going along the underside because that's just going to be a ton of wasted geometry. I'm just going to kind of select those right there. Of course, I should probably add back my mirror modifier, but maybe I can get by without it. 
don't have to save myself that much time. I'm not in that big of a hurry. You probably aren't either if you've been following along with this long tutorial. So I just press L to select those islands. As soon as I delete that one vertice or vertex, it became an island. Um, so this already obviously looks a little bit like stitching because it's kind of got those dots. I wish we could just press yes, leave, leave those there, but we can't do that. So what I'm going to do is essentially all these edges here are going to become pieces of thread. Um, so a little bit of a downfall of this method is that places where the geometry was more dense, the thread is going to appear a little bit smaller, which isn't necessarily the most realistic thing, but I think it gets the job done. So what we need to do is essentially create gaps here which is gonna be where all those little thread pieces are. So let's do Control B to bevel, and then we're gonna press V. If you look along the bottom, you'll see you have a lot of options. V will change it from affecting edges to vertices. And then we just need to kind of move that out till it's ever so slightly, just getting little gaps there. Something like that I think looks good. And then I want to select those. So you need to very carefully, this is a messed up, dang it. No, you would not wanna do that. It's like probably impossible. I'll if someone can record themselves going around the whole way in edge select mode, selecting each little thing without uh, getting one wrong, then I'll give you, I'll personally give you, give you some money. So let's, uh, let's see your video. No, I'm just kidding. Please don't do that challenge. It's not worth your time. So we want to select all those and we can use a new menu. I don't think we've used before called the select similar menu, which is going to be shift G and we can select similar Now make sure you're in edge select for this. I don't think it works in vertex select. So in edge select, we can select similar length, which is going to get all of them. And that's because we need to turn this threshold down pretty low until it's basically just getting the gaps. Um, so sometimes you might need to sort of type a value in here until you get just what you want. You can see up here again, where I was mentioning the geometry is a little tighter. It's not working as well, um, but I think this is pretty good. Maybe we turn down just a little bit more. Okay. I think that is giving me pretty much what I want. So let's have all those selected and then press X and delete these edges. And then we're actually going to use the same modifier we did down here, the skin modifier to give those a little bit of thickness. So let's go ahead and add in our skin modifier, which as usually is a little bit too large. So in edit mode, control A to bring that down to a more appropriate side. And of course I will address the issue here, which is that we only have one thread and uh, the skin modifier works pretty well when you just have one um, edge like we did down here. But when you have many, sometimes you need to define where to start the skin. So the easiest way to get that working is just to press A to select everything and then press mark root right here. And that will just kind of automatically mark a lot of roots. Now with the skin modifier, since it does add so much geometry, you need to be careful about how small you make these because you can see the smaller it goes, the harder it is to see, but the more geometry you're actually adding. So, um, so sort of be careful with that. I think, you know, something like this is probably going to be okay for me. Uh, and then I will actually, you know, if you like that blocky look, you can go for it. Uh, but I'll actually add a subdivision surface modifier just to smooth that out a little bit more. And of course we'll do smooth shading. So I am fully aware that that is a little bit chunky looking as far as thread goes, but you can um, do the same process we did earlier, just on a more dense mesh. And that would of course give you smaller threads. And then, you know, you could come in here and sort of manually um, either move or fix or delete um, things that are out of place. Of course, I don't have my mirror modifier on, so that's not going to be reflected over here, which is why the mirror modifier is so delicious. But yeah, that's a way to add stitching. Now, uh, I mentioned laces. I, again, I don't think I'll show you totally how to do that, but um, you could use the Boolean to cut holes in it. And then you could really use the same method we did at, with the strap to sort of um, go back and forth to create whatever lace design you want. Um, so let's just add in a couple more little details here. Uh, maybe again with the skin, we can use and kind of create a little border around this. So let's press shift D to duplicate that. And then let's go ahead and apply all the modifiers, tab to edit mode. Let's just find kind of a nice, uh, nice little ring here. Maybe, uh, maybe that one. Yeah, let's, let's use that one. Actually, no, I think I do want one right in the middle. All right. So then let's press control I to select the inverse, delete those vertices tab. And then we can, we can actually click this one down here and then shift L or control L to link modifiers, which doesn't seem to have worked. I think, okay, maybe those should have different modifiers. So we've got that one there. Let's just go ahead and add in our skin modifier tab in edit mode, bring it down a little bit, something like that looks nice. And then we can add, of course, our subdivision just to give ourselves a little bit of a detail here, make our strap look a little bit less like a single piece of cloth and a little more 
constructed. And yeah, I think that's pretty much everything I want to show you. Of course, we could go in and um, add like more little sections here, more swoops, swooshes, and logos. Do whatever you want to kind of just make this make this a little spicier. I'll try to uh, wrap up the tutorial as I'm making these changes. But yeah, hopefully your shoes are coming together nicely. Feel free to make changes as much as you want until it's looking just the way you like. I'm really excited to see what everyone comes up with. I know this is a tutorial I've been working on for a long time. Uh, the materials part will be out soon, I'm sure. Uh, but of course, in the meantime, hopefully everyone's spending a good amount of time to get your uh, to get your model looking right, so that by the time we do the materials, you'll have something super super sweet to work with. Um, so I'm just kind of adding maybe you know another little detail here. This could be uh, maybe this would like come down something like this. Anyways, I'm gonna keep playing with my model. You keep playing with yours, and um, yeah, you'll end up with something super cool. Let's. Uh, so now now is the part where you can uh, you can leave. But I'm just gonna keep making adjustments here. You know maybe this would be a little bit smaller. I just can't say bye. I'm really I'm really bad at goodbyes. So there's just kind of a little little detail there. Maybe this would like come up a little bit. Oh, actually, I had one other cool idea, which goodbye if you're leaving. It's been nice knowing you. Come around next time. There will be more tutorials. Like and subscribe. Leave lots of comments below. I think that's a good thing. Click all the links in the description. Go for lots of walks. Take lots of showers. Your housemates, be they wives, fiancés, boyfriends, girlfriends, significant others, the spider that you're sure comes out every night, whoever they are. I'm sure they'll appreciate you if you take a shower. They'll also appreciate you if you're really good at making shoe models in Blender, which you probably are by now if you followed through with this. I might change that detail. Um, okay, so I had I had actually a really cool idea. Let's shift D this. This is bonus content right now. Um, I'm gonna apply everything, 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 not the boolean. No, I'll, I'll go ahead and apply the boolean. I was gonna try to make like this like spider web detail. Like if we, if we like press like shift G, select similar length. I wonder if this will work. I'm gonna drop this super low, 0. 0.0001. Whoa, that's cool. This is one thing really cool about select similar is like you, it'll start to like get these crazy patterns. Like if we just select a different edge, length gets a totally different pattern. Shift G, length. Totally different pattern. This is insane. I'll know the people who watched this last part because they'll have the coolest shoes in the house. You can also select multiple and that's gonna start getting crazy stuff. So what I was thinking is I could like, I could like control I, select the inverse, delete those vertices, and then you could use this to like, you could add like a wireframe modifier, which we didn't use a water wireframe modifier. Let's see what that looks like. Whoa, crazy. Okay, it doesn't look that cool. But the wireframe modifier is something totally worth checking out. If you've ever looked at uh, the Mantissa, is that his, what he goes by, Midge, um, he's got really cool content on doing like crazy patterns and stuff like this. So totally check him out. You know, you could add like a, add a wireframe here if you wanted to make that look crazy. Uncheck from place original if you want to keep your original. That's kind of a cool detail. Anyways, thank you all for being here. I'm gonna play with my model a little bit more and then I will meet you in the materials section where we are going to add materials, add lighting, who knows what else we'll do. Should be a blast, hope to see you there. Looking forward to seeing your shoes. Uh, send them to me on Instagram or wherever you like to send things. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see you over there. Thanks again for being here. And like and subscribe. Have a great day. I already told you I was bad at goodbyes, but uh, yeah, see ya.